Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about the anatomy of suprarenal gland. The suprarenal gland is also known as the adrenal gland, which is an endocrine gland that produces a variety of hormones including adrenaline and the steroids, aldosterone and cortisol. So, to learn more about this gland, let's go in detail. So, in this video, I will be enumerating an introduction about the adrenal gland. We will also be learning about the location, size, shape, weight and about sheaths also. Then we will learn about the right suprarenal gland, left suprarenal gland, structure and functions. We will be also learning about the arterial supply, venous drainage and also lymphatics. On moving further, we will be learning about the nerve supply or suprarenal gland accessory suprarenal gland, the histology, development and also some important clinical anatomy related to suprarenal gland. Introduction The suprarenal gland are a pair of important endocrine glands situated on the posterior abdominal wall over the upper pole of the kidneys behind the peritoneum. They are made up of two parts, an outer cortex right here which is of mesodermal origin which secretes a number of steroid hormones and inner medulla can also be appreciated which is of neural crest origin and is made up of chromaffin cells and secretes adrenaline and noradrenaline or catecholamines. Location Each gland lies in the epigastrium at the upper pole of the kidney in front of the crest of the diaphragm opposite the vertebral end of the 11th intercostal space and the 12th rib. Size, shape and weight. Each gland measures 50 mm in height, 30 mm in breadth and 10 mm in thickness. It is approximately one third of the size of kidney at birth and about one thirtieth of it in adults. It weighs about 5 gram, the medulla forming one tenth of the gland. Right suprarenal is triangular in shape as you can see right here. Also we can also say it's pyramidal kind of in shape and the left suprarenal gland is semilunar in shape. Sheets. The suprarenal glands are immediately surrounded by areolar tissue containing considerable amount of fat. Outside the fatty sheath, there is a perirenal fascia. Between the two layers lies the suprarenal gland. The two layers are not fused above the suprarenal gland. The perirenal space is open and is in continuity with the bare area of liver on the right side and with subphrenic extra peritoneal space on the left side. The gland is separated from the kidney by a septum. The right suprarenal gland. The right suprarenal gland is triangular or pyramidal in shape. It has an apex, a base, two surfaces anterior and posterior surfaces and three borders which are the anterior border, medial border and lateral border. The left suprarenal gland. The left suprarenal gland is semilunar as I told before and it has two ends. The upper end is narrow and the lower end is kind of rounded. Two borders which are medial and lateral. The medial one is convex and the lateral one is concave two surfaces anterior surface and posterior surface structure and function examination of cross section of the suprarenal gland shows an outer part called the cortex which forms the main mass of the gland and a thin inner part called the medulla 
which forms only about one tenth of the gland. The two parts are absolutely di distinct from each other structurally, functionally and developmentally. The cortex is composed of three zones. The outer zona glomerulosa which produces mineralocorticoids that affect electrolyte and water balance of the body. B. The middle zona fasciculata which produces glucocorticoids. The inner one is zona reticularis which produces sex hormones. The medulla is composed of chromaffin cells that secrete adrenaline and noradrenaline. It contains cells in groups with lots of capillaries. Autonomic ganglion cells are also seen. Arterial supply. Each gland is supplied by a superior suprarenal artery which is a branch of the inferior phrenic artery and the middle suprarenal artery which is a branch of the abdominal aorta and the inferior suprarenal artery a branch of the renal artery venous drainage each gland is drained by one vein the right suprarenal vein drains into the inferior vena cava and the left suprarenal vein into the left renal vein lymphatic drainage Lymphatics from the suprarenal glands drain into the lateral aortic nodes. So this is a pictorial representation. Here you can appreciate the superior suprarenal artery. This one here is the middle suprarenal artery and this one here is the inferior suprarenal artery. These are the both glands. And here you can see the right suprarenal vein draining into inferior vena cava. And this is the left suprarenal vein. Nerve supply. The suprarenal medulla has a rich nerve supply through myelinated preganglionic sympathetic fibers. The chromaffin cells in it are considered homologous with postganglionic sympathetic neurons. Accessory suprarenal glands. These are small masses of cortical tissue often found in the areolar tissue around the main glands and sometimes in the spermatic cord, the epididymis and the broad ligament of the uterus. Histology Cortex. The cortex consists of three zones as I told. The outer zone which is the zona glomerulosa which contains groups of columnar cells with spherical nuclei. The middle zone which is also called as the fasciculata, zona fasciculata, has cells arranged in vertical rows as you can appreciate right here. Then there are Cells have uh, lots of vacuoles in the cytoplasm and the third zone which is the inner zone or zona reticularis right here contains cells in an anastomosing network. These cells are less vacuolated. The medulla. It is composed of chromaffin cells arranged in small groups surrounded by capillaries. In between these cells, there are autonomic ganglion cells. Development of suprarenal gland. The cortex of the gland develops from mesoderm of coelomic epithelium, while the medulla right here is derived from the neural crest cells or neuroectoderm. Clinical anatomy. Suprarenal gland can be demonstrated radiologically by computerizing tomography, otherwise CT scan. Insufficiency of cortical secretion due to atrophy or 
Tuberculosis of cortex results in Addison's disease. It is characterized by muscular weakness, low blood pressure, anemia, pigmentation of skin and terminal circulatory and renal failure. Excessive cortical secretion due to hyperplasia of the cortex may produce various effects. A. In adults, hyperglucocorticism causes Cushing syndrome which is characterized by obesity, hirsutism, diabetes and hypogonadism. B. In women, excessive androgens may cause musculinization. In men, excessive estrogens may cause feminization and breast enlargement. D. In children, excessive sex hormones causes adrenogenital syndrome, cortical hyperplasia. In female fetus, excessive androgens causes female pseudohermaphroditism. In the male fetus, it causes excessive development of external genital organs. This is how a CT scan looks like and these are some of the symptoms of Addison's disease. Number 4. Bilateral removal of the adrenal glands also known as adrenalectomy is done as a treatment of some advanced and inoperable cases disseminated carcinoma of the breast and prostate which do not respond to radiotherapy and which are considered to be dependent on hormonal control. Number 5. Benign tumors of the suprarenal medulla pheochromocytoma cause attacks of hypertension associated with palpitation, headache, excessive sweating and pallor of skin. Hope you have understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for watching.